Hello. I am sitting at home instead of at work. It is what passes for a snow day here in Kansas City today. So I'm actually home with the kids, but they're not bothering me right now. So that's good. Um, so yeah, a lot of times like the first snow of the season here, they close all the schools and that's cool. So anyway, because of the snow day, I was inspired to talk about one of my favorite Zen teachers, and his name is Ikkyu, and I thought about him because of the snow outside, because he had a quote I really love, and what he said was, every day in temples, priests minutely analyze complicated texts and sutras, and what they should do first is listen to the love letters sent by the wind and the rain, the snow and the moon. And that has always meant a lot to me. I think love letters sent by the wind and the rain, the snow and the moon, that's really, really beautiful. And what he meant was, uh, one, the priests in the temple are just spending time just arguing and debating philosophy and things like that and he's saying well they should be in the world and they should be living but also he was saying that there's a lot of wonder to life that we're missing out on a lot of the time right wind and rain snow and moon it's all very beautiful and we can look we can just look at the sky and feel an immense sense of wonder if we just pay attention to it i think a lot of us get that a kind of sense of wonder when we travel i know i went to colorado and saw mountains for the first time in my life and it was just amazing but i also think we can have that at home we can look at the sky anytime we can look at the weather right we can look at the beautiful snow outside that i've been taking pictures of all day i've just been staring out the windows but we don't right we're bored at home so i think we should try to cultivate that kind of sense of wonder and i think it would be really helpful to us and i'm going to tell you a little bit about how Ikkyu related to the priests in the temples because I think his story is important too. And that is, um, it was feudal, feudal era Ch uh, Japan and uh, priests were the kind of the way, Zen priests were kind of the way priests are viewed now, right? Like people that are, they're in the temple and they are really serious and they are really strict and they are just always engaged in very strict and serious things. And IQ came along and he had a different view. So he did something that the Zen priests in his day did not do. He was heavily judged because he went to brothels and bars and he went and hung out with homeless people. He did, right? He did, he did all sorts of things that made these, these, other Zen priests really judge him and they were like, what are you, that's unbecoming. What are you doing? And, and he just said, well, we're teaching suffering in the way out of suffering. This is, this is for everyone. This is not for just people that come to the temple. We should not be just preaching to the choir all the time. This is suffering in the way out of suffering. Everybody needs this. So he resolved to go to places like brothels where Zen priests would never go, right? And we can think in our in our western context, right? We can think of ministers going to brothels to give teachings and of course that would be frowned upon. It's the same even though uh if we read the Bible, of course Jesus was friends with homeless people and prostitutes and things because the fact of the matter is everybody needs spiritual teachings, right? It's not just for people who can in the, in the context of Ikkyu's time, it was people who could maybe stop working and go spend a bunch of time at the temple. And Ikkyu just wanted to take it to the world. He said, this is suffering in the way out of suffering. We've got to share this with everyone. And he was just judged and ridiculed for that. And they called him crazy, but he kind of took that as a badge of honor. And he said, yeah, I'm, I'm crazy. That's fine. 
but he was just out there really embodying the teachings by sharing them with people who would never have access to them because prostitutes and homeless people and alcoholics were not going to hear about Buddhism unless Ikki went and took it to them. And I think that that is a, a deep and profound lesson for us on the Buddhist path is that we need to be out there and we need to be sharing the teachings to anyone that wants them rather than waiting to see if people are worthy. And I think we can think of that with anything we share. We shouldn't be waiting to see if people are worthy. And that is what the other priests really expected Ikkyu to do. They expected him to wait and give the teachings to people that are worthy. But the, the truth is that we're all worthy and we all need help. And so uh, that is why he's a hero to me because he was willing to just step outside what everyone said he was supposed to do and step outside what the conventional and the traditional and just go out into the world and go far afield from where there were any Buddhist teachings to go to the most likely, most unlikely places and give teachings there. And I think that is really important and I really value that a great deal. And that's why he's my hero. I guess that's all I have to say today. I'm going to go look out my window and look at some snow some more. I hope you have enjoyed this video.